Could Google's Gemini, an AI tool announced recently, outperform OpenAI's ChatGPT, as well as Microsoft's Bing AI? Explore Gemini, Google's ambitious AI project that draws upon AlphaGo-inspired problem-solving techniques, aiming to redefine AI capabilities and outperform models like ChatGPT. Google is gearing up to revolutionize the industry with this new AI they've been working on, and it goes by the name of Gemini. It's seriously next-level stuff. They are rivaling ChatGPT and Mighty GPT-4 in terms of understanding as well as generating natural language. Gemini is a brainchild of Google's DeepMind under the leadership of CEO Demis Hazabis. He envisions Gemini to outdo established AI models like ChatGPT in their game. Gemini is designed to tackle any data or task without resorting to specialized models and it's set to produce unique content that transcends the limits of its training data. The development blueprint for Gemini leverages the triumph of Google's AI AlphaGo, an AI software that made headlines by beating a world champion in the game of Go back in 2016. The technique that fueled AlphaGo's success at being implemented in Gemini, marrying AlphaGo's problem-solving prowess with advanced language processing capabilities. This involves reinforcement learning, a method where software iteratively tries to complete a task and improve based on performance feedback. Now, what's Gemini all about? Well, this is Google's latest project in the world of large language models. The full form is Generalized Multimodal Intelligence Network, and it's basically this mega-powerful AI system that can handle multiple types of data and tasks all at once. We're talking text, images, audio, video, and even 3D models and graphs. And the tasks like question answering, summarization, translation, captioning, sentiment analysis, and so on. But here's the deal. Gemini isn't just one single model. It's an entire network of models, all working together to deliver the best results possible. Alright, now how Gemini works. So basically, Gemini uses a brand new architecture that merges two main components, a multimodal encoder and a multimodal decoder. The encoder's job is to convert different data types into a common language that the decoder can understand. Then the decoder takes over. It is generating outputs in different modalities based on the encoded inputs and the task at hand. Say for instance, the input is an image, the task is to generate a caption. The encoder would turn the image into a vector that captures all its features and meaning. And the decoder would then generate a text output that describes the image. Now what sets Gemini apart and makes it special is that Gemini has several advantages when compared to other large language models like GPT-4. First off, it is just more adaptable. It can handle any type of data and task without needing specialized models or any sort of fine tuning. Plus, it can learn from any domain and data set without being boxed in by predefined categories or labels. So compared to other models that are trained on specific domains or tasks, Gemini can tackle new and unseen scenarios much more efficiently. Then, there's the fact that Gemini is generally more efficient. It uses fewer computational resources and memory than other models dealing with multimodality separately. Also, it uses a distributed training strategy, which means it can make the most out of multiple devices and servers to speed up the learning process. And the best part is that Gemini could scale up to larger datasets, as well as models without compromising its performance or quality, which is pretty impressive if you ask me. If we talk about size and complexity, one of the most common things people look at to measure a large language model is its parameter count, right? So basically, parameters are numerical variables, which serve as the learned knowledge of the model, allowing it to make predictions and generate text based on the inputs it receives. More parameters mean more potential for learning and generating diverse and accurate outputs. But having more parameters also means you need more computational resources and memory to train and use the model. GPT-4 has 1 trillion parameters, which is about 6 times bigger than GPT-3.5 with its 175 billion parameters. That makes GPT-4 one of the biggest language models ever made. For Gemini, Google has said that it comes in 4 sizes, Gecko, otter, bison, and unicorn. They haven't given us the exact parameter count for each size, but based on some hints, we could guess that unicorn is the largest and probably similar to GPT-4 in terms of parameters, maybe a bit less. It can churn out outputs in different modalities based on what the user prefers, 
and it can even generate novel and diverse outputs that aren't bound by existing data or templates. For example, Gemini could whip up original images or videos based on text descriptions or sketches. It could also create stories or poems based on images or audio clips. But will Gemini be integrated into Google's existing services? While specific details are yet to be released, it's clear that Gemini could be integrated into a wide range of Google services, such as Search, Gmail, Google Docs, and more, which could enhance these services by providing more accurate responses understanding multimodal inputs, and even generating multimodal content. Now, let's talk about how it does not exactly outsmart, but perform tasks that are more varied and longer than GPT-4. All right, let me give you a few examples. One thing Gemini can do is multimodal question answering. This is when you ask a question involving multiple data types, like text and images. For instance, who is the author of this book, while showing an image of a book cover? Or perhaps, what is the name of this animal while showing an image of some creature? Gemini can answer these questions by combining its skills in understanding both text and visuals. Another cool thing it could do is multimodal summarization. Imagine you've got a piece of information comprising different types of data, like text and audio. While Gemini is developing, its projected features are already stirring global interest. The system is predicted to bring about significant changes in the AI domain especially in the generative AI industry, which is forecasted to hit 80.16 billion pounds by 2030. Nevertheless, it's noteworthy that Gemini's current capability is limited to text processing, unlike GPT-4, which can process images, audio, text, and video. Despite this restriction, Gemini aspires to provide more creative responses, breaking free from its training data to produce unexpected content. Google's past AI ventures such as the chatbot Bard faced some roadblocks, including a factual error in its debut demo that led to a significant plunge in the market value of parent company Alphabet. These challenges likely add to the pressure to ensure a flawless launch for Gemini. And so, the rollout of Gemini is anticipated to be meticulously planned to prevent such mishaps. As the development of Gemini progresses, it's a project worth keeping an eye on. Gemini could reshape the AI industry and establish new benchmarks for AI capabilities if successful. However, until the final version is out and assessed in real-world situations, whether it will outperform ChatGPT and other AI systems remains unanswered. So, where does this leave us in terms of the future of AI? It's obvious to me that Google is likely going to give GPT-4 and maybe even GPT-5 a real challenge in the coming years with this multimodal approach. This also means we're likely to see more applications and services that use Gemini's capabilities to provide better user experiences and solutions. For instance, we could see more personalized assistants that can understand and respond to us in different modalities, or maybe more creative tools to help us generate new content or ideas in different modalities. Given its potential impact on the AI industry and the wide range of application it could revolutionize, keeping an eye on Gemini's development is essential. As more information is released, we will get a clearer picture of its capabilities, applications, and how it compares to other models like GPT-4 and GPT-5. What are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comments section below. If you liked today's video, then leave a thumbs up, and do not forget to subscribe to the channel. See you again soon in another video.